Fiber Census, the world leader in perimeter protection, is committed to providing the highest possible level of technical training to our customers so that our products perform reliably and to their fullest potential. We are therefore pleased to present this brief training video on the subject of installing ST-type optical connectors on the insensitive and sensing fibers used in the construction of our fiber optic based intrusion detection systems. After viewing this presentation, the student will have a firm basis for properly performing these critical tasks. Fiber Census offers a comprehensive toolkit, the CK500, for connectorizing our optical fibers. We will use the CK500 to illustrate the proper techniques involved. The CK500 includes all of the tools, consumables, and basic test equipment needed to connectorize the sensitive and insensitive optical cables that FiberSensus offers. Let's examine the toolkit's contents to become familiar with the individual items included. Fiber Template this two-sided laminated card illustrates life-size depictions of the strip lengths involved when preparing our optical fibers for termination. One side shows measurements involved when connectorizing 3 mm cable, and the other illustrates the same measurements required when using our 4 mm optical cables. In either case, the cable should be carefully laid out on the card to mark the fiber or to verify that the cable has been properly stripped. Cable slash fiber stripper. This multifunction tool can be used to strip the outer jacket from our 3mm SC3 and IC3 cables and to strip the jacket and acrylic coating from the 900 micron jacketed optical fiber that is inside. Alternate cable slash fiber stripper. This is also a multifunction tool that can be used to perform the stripping operations on the 3mm cables. The use of one or the other stripping tool depends on personal preference, although the larger tool seems to work better for stripping the outer cable jacket, and this smaller, more delicate tool is often preferred for stripping the jacket and acrylic coating from the 900 micron fiber. Scissors. These are very sharp and accurate scissors that can cut through 3 and 4 millimeter optical cables easily. Ordinary scissors are not capable of neatly cutting through the aramid or Kevlar yarn that is used as an internal strength layer in optical cables. Reserve these scissors for cutting your optical fiber and take good care of them. Retaining Compound The Loctite 680 retaining compound is the adhesive that is injected into the ferrule for the purpose of holding the fiber in place. Syringe the syringe is used to inject the retaining compound into the ferrule in preparation for insertion of the optical fiber into the ferrule. Fiber Cleaning Materials The fiber cleaning materials consist of a small aerosol can of fiber connector cleaner and a package of fiber cleaning wipes. These materials are used for cleaning the stripped fiber before insertion in the ferrule and for cleaning the ferrule during polishing and before system installation. Both cleaner and wipes are specially formulated to leave zero residue on the fiber slash ferrule. While isopropyl alcohol can be used as a substitute for the cleaner, do not use an ordinary wipe for cleaning the fiber or ferrule. Activator The Loctite 7090 activator is a liquid that acts as a catalyst to speed the cure of the Loctite 680 retaining compound. The activator allows the retaining compound to cure in approximately 10 seconds, making the connectorization process quick and easy. Crimper The crimper is a heavy-duty hand tool that is used to create a strong, strain-relieved mechanical connection between the fiber optic cable and the ST connector body. A series of two crimps first attaches the connector body to a crimp ring, using the cable's aramid yarn as a strain relief element. The second crimp provides attachment of the crimp ring to the cable's outer jacket, thus providing a robust and reliable mechanical attachment of cable to connector. Scribe The scribe is a professional quality carbide tip blade that is used to cleave the excess fiber from the ferrule after the retaining compound has cured. It has a reversible blade that doubles the tool life and a clear safety cap that protects the blade from damage when not in use. Ferrule Polishing Equipment and Supplies 
The ferrule polishing equipment and supplies consist of a glass polishing plate, a rubber polishing pad, a metal polishing disc, and several grades of polishing film, a brown 5 micron grit film for rough polishing, and a white 0.05 micron grit film for fine polishing. Fiberscope. This 200x fiber microscope allows close-up inspection of the ferrule end for dirt, debris, contaminants, and polish quality. It utilizes dual LED light sources to provide both direct and coaxial lighting so that all imperfections can be easily seen. It is a general purpose tool that can be used for conducting system level testing as well as ferrule polish checking. Light Source the light source uses a visible wavelength red laser diode to couple light into a half or fully completed fiber optic cable in order to perform a basic test for passage of light. It can also be used as a system debugging tool in the same way. Note that it is a laser light source, albeit a low power one. Still, it can cause damage to your eyes, so use it with appropriate caution. All FiberSense's 200 and 300 series fiber defender processors utilize ST-type optical connectors to couple light to and from the sensing elements. The ST is a keyed, quick-release style connector with a spring-loaded bayonet mount. They are among the most commonly used and reliable optical connectors and are very easy to work with both in terms of connectorization and field use. Note that there are different connectors for single-mode and multi-mode fibers. Since the core of a single mode fiber is 9 microns in diameter as opposed to the 50 micron core in multi mode fiber, the single mode connector's ferrule must be made far more accurately in order to align the cores of mated connector pairs. As a consequence, the single mode connector is more expensive than the multi mode version. Each ST connector comes disassembled in a sealed plastic bag containing all the required parts. Before opening the bag, Make sure you've selected the appropriate single or multi-mode connector. For this demonstration, we'll be connectorizing a multi-mode cable. So let's identify the parts of our multi-mode connector. First, there's a large rubber boot that's used as a strain relief for 3mm and 4mm jacketed cable. Next. There's a smaller boot that's used to provide strain relief when connectorizing 900 micron buffered fiber. Next, there's a crimp sleeve that is used to attach the connector body directly onto the cable jacket and Kevlar to eliminate cable pull away. Finally, there's the connector body itself. Note that the ferrule end of the body is capped to protect the ferrule from damage. Keep the ferrule capped whenever possible, especially after the connector has been polished. The first step in the process is stripping the various layers from the cable and optical fiber and trimming the Kevlar to the proper length. Before proceeding, however, be aware that working with optical fiber can be hazardous due to the sharpness of the glass fragments that can and will be produced during the connectorization process. These fragments can be hazardous and painful if they pierce the skin or if they are ingested and they can be particularly dangerous if they enter the eye. The use of safety glasses and proper fiber disposal methods are highly recommended at all times when working with optical fiber. Begin by sliding the large boot over the 3mm optical cable, narrow end first. Then slide the crimp ring over the cable, again placing the narrow end on the cable first. Observe the orientation of the two parts to make sure they're correct then slide them out of the way. Next, place the cable on the stripping diagram using the 3 mm side of the template. Make sure that the end of the cable aligns with the end mark on the template as shown. Using the Sharpie, put two marks on the cable jacket, one 35 mm from the end and the other 25 mm from the end as shown in this close-up image. Then, using the cable stripping tool, carefully remove the outer jacket to the 25 mm mark. It's best to strip off the jacket in small bits. We'll do it in two pieces in this case.
Gather the Kevlar to separate it from the fiber and put several twists in it to make it a bit more stable and cut off as much of it as possible. Strip off the jacket down to the 35 millimeter mark and place the cable on the template so that the fiber end aligns with the end mark. Make a mark on the fiber 20mm 